Welcome to another tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to take the maximum value from multiple fields in the same record in your Microsoft Access database. Today's question comes from Tabitha in Knoxville, Tennessee, one of my Platinum members. Tabitha says, I have a table where I'm tracking quiz and test scores for my students. Every quarter they take three quizzes and three tests. Their grade is calculated by taking the average of the three tests and the largest grade from the quizzes. So let's say they got quiz grades of 80, 75, and 70, and then got hundreds on all of their tests. Their final grade would be three one hundreds for the tests plus 80, which is the largest of the quizzes, divided by four, and that's going to equal 95. My question to you is, how can I determine the largest of the three quiz grades? Well, Tabitha, that's not that hard at all. Let me show you how to do it. Now, before we get started, got a couple prerequisites for you. First, you should know how to make calculated fields in queries. All right, so if not, go watch this video. It's free. It's on my website. It's on my YouTube channel. Go watch it right now. And also go watch this video on the if function. The immediate if function. It's basically an if-then statement that you can put in a query. So go watch this too if you haven't watched this yet. Okay, before we get into access, I want to show you how most people do this in Excel. Because a lot of people, including Tabitha, are coming into access from Excel. And in Excel, you do things a little bit differently. And I want to try to get you to stop thinking in terms of Excel and start thinking like access. But first, I'm going to show you the way to do this in Excel so you can see the difference. So the easiest way to do this, and I'm a big fan of multiple steps. I don't like to make one function that's complicated and does everything in one step. I like to break things up. So what we're going to do first is we're going to find the total of the three tests first. So let's put over here, we're going to say equals the sum of the three tests. So there they are right there. Press enter. And yeah, it's saying right here, all right, it ignores the adjacent cells because it, 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 it wants you to fill in all the way for the quizzes too, but we're just going to ignore that error. And I'm going to auto fill down, double click there. Same thing. I hate this. This is, a, this is irritating to me. <laughs> um, and this will be the sum of the test, so sum of T. Okay. Now next, we can find the max of the quizzes using the max function, so max Q is going to be equals the max of the three quizzes. All right. Now, this isn't something that you can do easily in Access. All right, there it is. Again, autofill it down, turn that off, go away. OK, and now that we have the sum of the three tests and the max of the quizzes, now we can find their average, which is going to be equals this plus that divided by four, okay? And that'll give you what you're looking for. Okay, and we can do one of these jobs if you want. Oh, here, we'll go like that. We'll go like that. Okay, perfect. All right. Now, in Excel, it's easy to do ranges this way. All right, give me the max value of that. Give me the, the sum of all of those. In Access, you really can't do that. So let's create the same thing in Access. All right, so let's create a table. Now, like I said before, this isn't necessarily the best way to store this data. I wouldn't store test one, test two, test three, quiz one, quiz two, quiz three as fields in the table, okay? I wouldn't do these as fields. Not the best way to do it. Now, I'm gonna show you how to do it this way because Tabitha and I actually had this conversation in email. This is the way her database is set up. She doesn't want to change it. She's got years worth of data in it. So she wants to work with this. It's always three tests and three quizzes per quarter, always. So she has no desire to change it. And that's fine. But if you want a variable number of these things, then I would recommend making this a separate table. And if you really want to see how to do this, I can show you. We'll do it in a future video, though. So if you want to see me do that in a future video, post something in the comments down below. And if enough people are interested, I will do it. Okay, continuing on. So let's just make a simple table to store the same basic data. All right, we've got an ID. We've got our student name. And then we've got 
test one. And I'm gonna make these numbers. Yeah, you should make them doubles if you wanna do fractions. I'm just gonna keep them as long integers because it's easier. Test two as a number, test three as a number. And then we got quiz one, quiz two, and quiz three. And if you do your test and quiz grades and you want to do fractional components, again, make these doubles down here. Um, you can still make the final average a double, even though even if these are all stored as long integers, okay? Now, do we need a field down here to store the average? No. Why? Because those are gonna be calculated fields. No need to store something that you can calculate. Yeah, there are some exceptions, but generally that's the rule. Okay, so I'll save this as my grade T, we'll call it. All right, primary key, yes. And in fact, while we're at it, let's rename this thing grade ID. I, uh, I try not to name things just ID. Sometimes when I'm starting a table off, I'll just put ID there until I determine exactly what I want to call this table. <laughs> then I'll change the name of the ID. All right, let's put some data in it now. And save a table, yeah, okay. All right. Now, can we copy and paste this stuff over to our table here? Yeah, you can, but your, your, your fields all have to match up and that ID kind of messes things up. So here's what you're gonna do. Save that, we're gonna make a query. All right, create, query design, and then we're gonna bring in the fields just to match up with that other Excel sheet. So we're gonna go uh, bring in grade T and then bring in exactly the fields the way they are on the other table. This one to this one. Okay, now these all line up, save this as grade Q. Okay, run the query. Now these all line up, right? So we're gonna come over here and these here, you want you want to copy whole rows. So I'm just gonna copy that and paste it here. And then watch this, select the rows, copy, come over here, select the row and paste. And look at that, they all line up nice. Once you get to the end of the row here, right? The copy paste knows that you hit the end of the row and everything copied in. And these all have to line up exactly. You don't want this stuff in the row. All right, so it's just a little trick. Now to do the mat or the the sum of the three tests, that's the easy part. Okay, that we can come in here very easily. Let me make these a little smaller. Okay, that's easy, right? We could say sum t sum of the tests is equal to test one plus test two plus test three. That's the easy one. Okay. Now, how do we figure out the max of the quizzes? That's a little tougher. For that, we have to use the if function. Now, access does have a max function, but it doesn't work the way you think it works. It doesn't work the same as in Excel. See, in Excel, a range can be this way, it can be this way, it can be a whole, or, oh, I didn't mean to move that. <laughs> a range can be vertical, it can be horizontal, it can be a block like that. All right, it's just a starting upper left, then a bottom right. All right, but in Access, it doesn't work that way. In Access, you can only use those functions like max in the same field with multiple records. So for example, in an aggregate query. All right, if you make an aggregate query, you can add up all of the test one grades. You can add up all of the quiz two grades. But you can't use an aggregate query across multiple fields like that. Right, it'd be nice if I could come over here and say, okay, I want X to be the max of quiz one, comma, quiz two, comma, quiz three. That'd be nice, but it's the wrong number of arguments. It doesn't work that way, okay? There's also a dmax function, which you can again use to get the maximum value of a single field across multiple records. But it doesn't work across multiple fields in the same record. So that's why I want you to get, get you to think like access, less like Excel. So we actually have to compare these three values. Okay, and to do that, we're gonna use the if function. Now, let's just pretend we only have two quizzes. Okay, let's pretend we got two of them. I'm gonna zoom in. All right. So here, we're gonna call it max Q. And we're gonna say if quiz one is greater than quiz two, yeah, you could use greater than or equal to if you want to, all right? Then 
The answer here would be quiz one. Otherwise, the answer would be quiz two. And honestly, it doesn't matter if you use greater than or equal to because if they're equal, it, it won't matter. it be the same thing. Okay, so that's how you'd compare two of them. And this should give you the larger of one or two. Forget three for a minute, right? There's 89, there's 87, there's 76. Let's make this one bigger. And there you go, there's 99. Okay. Now, if you want to do three values, then this gets a little more complicated because now you got to figure quiz three into all this. All right, so let's chop this off for a minute. We're going to say if quiz one is greater than quiz two, and quiz one is greater than quiz three, then the greatest value is quiz one. Otherwise, now we got to check quiz two against the other values. So we need another if statement. If, whoops, two eyes, if. Okay, and this if statement's going to have those parentheses, and then the outer if statement's going to have that parentheses. I like to put my parentheses in. Well, when I'm making nested functions like that, I put the parentheses in there. All right, now we got to compare quiz two against the other two. So if quiz two is greater than quiz one and quiz two is greater than quiz three, then comma, the answer is quiz two. Otherwise, quiz three is the biggest one. Right, so check to see if quiz one is bigger than quiz two and quiz one is bigger than quiz three. In other words, quiz one is bigger than the other two, then it's quiz one. Otherwise, check quiz two against one, two against three. If two is the biggest, then it's quiz two. Otherwise, it's quiz three. And if you had a fourth option, you'd replace this with another if statement. And you can see how doing multiple values, four, five, six, seven values can get quite tedious and make very, very long functions. I'm going to show you a solution for that in the extended cut for the members. But for the rest of us, this is how you do three of them. Hit OK. And now I'll run it. And there you go. There's your max Q. 89, 99, 99. There we go. So there's one in each position. Quiz one, quiz three, quiz two. Okay. That's how you got to do it. There's, there's no other easier way I can think of. For, for doing it like this, all right? If you got a better solution, I want to hear about it. Tell me about it down in the comments below. And yeah, like I said, if you're just dealing with a single field, there's all kinds of things you can do. There's a max function, there's a dmax function, there's a max uh, and the form footer you can put down there, but it doesn't work across multiple fields in the same record. This is the only way I can think of to do this. With the exception of making your own function and creating something called a parameter array. And that is what we're going to do for the members in the extended cut. It's gonna require a little bit of VBA. We're gonna write our own function called max value. And we're gonna use something called a parameter array. And that's where you can pass an array of values, basically an unlimited number of values, however many you want. You got five fields, pass all five of them. You got 10, pass 10. You got two, pass two. All right, that's what a parameter array is good for. And then it will analyze all of them and return the biggest value. All right, so that'll be in the extended cut for the members. Oh, I almost forgot. We got to finish our calculation in here, right? All right, so we'll finish that like this. And then over here, we're going to say uh, student average is going to be the sum t plus max q divided by 4. And there you go. And if you want to round it, you can throw that whole thing in the round function. Comma one. I'll zoom in so you can see that a little better. There you go. And there it is. Beautiful. Okay, so if you want to learn more of the extended cut for the members, silver members and up, get access to all of my extended cut videos. It's $5.99 a month, folks. It's worth the cost in gold i would think well no that's gold membership that's 9.99 <laughs> but no we're gonna do a lot more in the extended cut and um i do cover uh, a lot of this stuff in my developer classes as well so if you want to learn more check it out but this has been your tech help video for today tabitha i hope this helps you out and the rest of you i hope you learned something i'll see you next time
If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the show more link down below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full length courses found on my website, not just for access too. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like level one, level two is just $1. Yep, that's all, $1. And it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website, and you can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.